Hello and welcome back. In the previous lectures, we did understand about the AA, the Connect installation and their architecture. Now, we would be uh, going further to understand more about AA, the Connect specific uh, sync service manager that's a synchronization specific uh, the rules and the involvement within that so these are the things which we talked about like AAD specific uh, the pre requirements and the verification part of a domain and we also try to install uh, with the AAD connect uh, with the option called the password has sync with the single sign on all that was uh, working fine but we didn't uh, go through it in depth of uh, these kind of you know uh, rules so we didn't you know even though shown you know what are the accounts were used but we didn't uh, cover in depth of uh, the filtering options especially we did only covered uh, the like a group based or domain based or you or specific attribute level but we didn't talk about uh, much about the sync specific role so let's talk about that so if you start uh, looking into it like if we are talking about anything called synced identities that means it can be from Azure AD or from uh, on-premises directly so in this case this is your Azure AD and this is your on-premise so to connect um, and get one identity solution for you you need to install the AAD connect that's what we learned in the previous lectures now it's time for us to understand more about AAD Connect specific rules, how they are um, impacted or how they are help us to, you know, in order to get the um, sync process to be smoother. For example, if you see here, the act actually you can get the directory information from your local active directory space as well as from the Azure AD connector specific and in between there is a, a metaverse this is a virtual environment kind of thing where uh, these three are think that these three are definitely within the database but now what happens is this represents the left side local AD represents active directory and Azure AD represents a connection specific to AAD specific and then in between you do have metaverse and that's where actually the compassion would happen and the changes would happen and those changes will be you know carry forwarded in terms of the inbound and outbound so that's what we're gonna learn now so you see here the space called local AAD connect and what of the changes are gonna process that would you know come back to metaverse and within this metaverse what we do is um, we also get it uh, the information from uh, AAD specific this is just for the inbound rules now let's also have a look on outbound rules very similar like whatever the changes has been done that would you know uh, push back to local AAD connect to the side and the side to the AAD connect so you might be you know, thinking what are those changes uh, we would be you know, uh, showing you that in a minute or so uh, let's say you have a, uh, a local AAD connector uh, in this case for example this is a space right so we talk about here more uh, specific to local AAD connector space and any of the user object definitely that would have some of the attributes right so let's say Sam account name is there user principal name a user account control object good ID and display name employee ID so these are the local um, AD specific attributes let's say so what happened once you start synchronization so that means the sync would happen with the help of local AAD local AD connector space so once that's connected what happens is it actually process uh, the rules to metaverse so what are the changes would happen in the metaverse the metaverse will get the changes so the changes at Sam account name gets changed to account name because uh, definitely the naming uh, the attributes are not the same even though you have the Azure AD connected the attributes are not the same so to reflect as the same or to make as a visible as a one all you have to do is uh, you have to depend on the metaverse that's where the Microsoft has dependent on AAD connect a mechanism within that they are changing so when you start syncing Sam account name that gets changed to account name and similarly user account control um, that gets changed to user uh, enable that's the account enable status and also uh, object good ID is nothing but a your source anchor so 
I did you know talked about the source anchor uh, in the previous lectures source anchor is the anchor where it tied up and then it gets you know synced with the uh, Azure AD or wherever it has to go for example maybe to the local AAD so similar things would happen uh, from the AAD connect specific so what happens is uh, in AAD that's Azure AD you have the account name and also you have account enabled and source anchor as the same because that's how the uh, schema or you take it as attributes are present in Azure AAT. So now this is all about the inbound. So it's not just the inbound. We also have to depend on outbound. Let's uh, have a look on outbound. That means uh, the data was uh, processed for the syncing to Metaverse now. Uh, similarly, AAD also pulls the data and it puts in one place now so this is the place you have all the inputs now let's have a look on output so what happens is in the output it would actually um, send the data even for the output So the outbound also very similar like you know you have uh, the changes that gets changed account name to Sam here Sam account name and that's how it gets changed and also account enable gets changed to user account control and source anchor gets changed as the object GUID that's how it's going to change let's understand more about uh, in terms of the user objects or the group objects or the device objects how the sync process would happen so as for uh, you might have already understand that AAD connect as well as the AD connect space both were there and uh, within these the inbound and outbound is happening right so let's uh, apply these things how the sync rules will process for the user specific and group and device specific so as you know that you know every object will have an inbound and outbound specific that means for users we have inbound and outbound similarly for groups and devices now let's uh, have a look on how the AAD connector specific will be there so within AAD connect there is something called in from AAD and as well as the from AAD so there are two different in rules will be there for the user specific similarly for the out to active directory that's a for the user object as well as the out to AAD user so these are the rules inside your sync synchronization so these are the by default rules yes you can change them you can do you can uh, modify you can add your own attributes to get a uh, preference uh, instead of you know specific attributes to be you know synced so let's see uh, let's say we take as uh, one of the department called only HR department to be synced with Azure AAT then you can you know, simply change that department a specific attribute of uh, within your um, sync process or sync rules and then that gets only affected that means all the HR department specific can be synced similarly the location and rest of the things can be done so these are the advanced level of you know configurations that can be uh, configured later point but you know if you just understand now the sync rules how these works uh, this makes easy for us for the demo purpose so now we understand for the AAD uh, for the AD as well as the AAD specific in from and in from and also out to out to similarly for the groups uh, remaining um, uh, remaining object types like uh, groups and devices also it would be the uh, same things will be uh, there for example here outbound and out to ad and out to aad similarly for in from ad computer uh, in this case it's a computer and if here we call it as a device in azure ad so a little bit change of the name but it remains the same i'm going to talk about now about three different commands that can be used for uh, by using powershell you can sync and you can get more information about your a your AAD connect or active directory specific as your AAD connect specific sync uh, schedule information you can get it the first one would be the get hyphen AD sync scheduler this will uh, give you this uh, specific command gives the information about mostly um, about the status of your sync specific for example here a load sync um, interval is every 30 minutes it can sync so that's the currently sync configuration that means every 30 minutes it is getting synced similarly current effective sync um, cycle interval also 30 uh, minutes and custom sync interval is not configured 
So the first uh, sink would be initial sink. A later point every time it goes to O goes with the delta. So here the next sink is always delta, and when it's going to happen next sink cycle, the time as well as the uh, purview of uh, history from your console, uh, that is uh, the from the GUI, you have the sink when it is synced and. Uh, all that history will be there that is by default seven days it will store that information is available here and also sync cycle enabled and maintenance if it is enabled true uh, that means it it would you know take uh, goes for the maintenance mode and also staging mode um, this is again used for the uh, purpose of configuring more than one AAD connect for the higher availability purpose where it just uh, put into the um, database but it doesn't actually process the objects to sync to AAD um, but it just pulls the information and it saves uh, the information so all this uh, will be you know get the information from get AAD sync scheduler and next one would be if you want to sync you can use start AAD sync and sync cycle there's no spell mistake it is a twice the sync that indicates here the policy type as a delta it's going to success and if you're trying to do uh, even initial sync uh, you can always go for delta or initial can be you no know, used uh, I'm sorry here initial uh, would be you no know, given but I didn't uh, type a mistake here uh, but you can you know give as an initial that would you know gives the information so now we did talk about many things uh, so far but we didn't see the uh, synchronization rule editor much so this is the rule editor which uh, does all this you know inbound outbound of the objects and you can edit those rules from here by editing make sure that you know whenever you're trying to edit it will give you a warning that you know make a clone of that existing rule so when you try to clone that specific rule that makes uh, easy our life later point if something goes wrong for further level of troubleshooting so make sure that uh, you always take a clone of the rule uh, whatever the option it is giving by default you try to you know, choose that and make sure that you take that uh, cloning now the uh, precedent says anything uh, near to the one as a value indicates the higher precedence that means it first process in this case user join of because it has the 115 as a precedence and then it goes for the user identity with 116 similarly it will follow remaining precedences so that's how it's going to happen and you can filter here the direction of inbound and outbound in this case it's just for the outbound and you see here out to AAD that's what we talked about in this small uh, sync rules presentation out to AAD that's how it's there and also if you filter with the inbound you get as the into also inbound uh, in from and in from AAD so all that would you know come up for you so that's how it's gonna work and I hope yeah this is where I gave the initial sync specific um, uh, I didn't forgot but it's there so that's all about the sync specific things I'm gonna talk uh, and show you more with the demo uh, maybe you know you can learn more when I'm trying to you know demonstrate this all these steps I hope this is useful for you thank you for watching this